Hello, salutations. What to do is start the gamer all father, do rag gang, know the vibes like the scribe. Let's get it. And today I'm bringing you what is, in my opinion, the best way to play Jane Foster, the mighty Thor. Now, I don't have all the gear that I want with the optimal stats on every piece, but I'm already incredibly powerful and I feel like this will be the ideal template going forward. So I'm going to break down her skills, the gear and where to farm it, as well as tips to help you be more mighty. So make sure you watch till the end. Starting with the heroics. Jane's first two heroics are the same as Thor's, Warrior's Fury and God Blast. Warrior's Fury allows you and nearby allies to be temporarily invincible and infuses Jane's attacks with lightning. For the first skill, I'm using Ymir's Wrath to give my team a 25% damage boost. Depending on your team and what you're running, you can also use Hell's Discretion to revive them if they're down, but I usually stick with the damage boost. With Asgard's Fortune, enemies defeated under Warrior's Fury have a 50% chance to drop a heroic orb. This is an essential part of the build because, when combined with my gear, will effectively give me infinite heroics. For God Blast, I'm using Daughter of Midgard, which turns God Blast into a whirlwind that does 20% more damage and applies cryo. Like Thor, I have three charges of this instead of one. You do this by loading into any mission with Thunderstorm equipped. Then you switch to Daughter of Midgard and reload checkpoint. That's it. This will permanently give you three charges of the Cryo God Blast instead of the one. For her ultimate, the All Weapon, her only unique heroic, I'm using Raw Uru. This inflicts shock to enemies as Mjolnir flies around and hits them. I prefer this skill because doing battery damage is a big part of this build, as I'll explain later in the gear section. Unda Yarn's Bite gives enemies defeated by the All Weapon a 30% chance to drop a heroic orb, which, as we briefly went over, is important for the build. I'm also using Undu Yarn's Bark, which makes the overcharge meter feel 25% faster. This is what I switch to in boss encounters. On the Mastery Tree, Increased Impact increases your ability to interrupt the enemy while using signature attacks. For Jane, it's the same hammer spin as Thor, and it's an important part of this particular build. Unarmed Damage gives you a 50% increase to unarmed attacks. Like Thor, Jane can do a lot of damage with this, especially when combined with Mjolnir shocking enemies. Heroic Takedown Mastery should be on all of your heroes. It gives you a Heroic Orb every time you do a takedown. This isn't a fully ranged build, but the beauty of Jane's kit is that you have the tools to make a true hybrid between ranged and melee. Targeting range makes it so that when you throw the hammer, it always hits the target on the way back. This pairs well with Critical Return, which increases the chance of getting a critical attack on the return flight by 35%. The last tree doesn't matter, but I prefer the 15% increase the damage from Beam Star of Fire because it actually does pretty decent damage. For the intrinsic, Force of Will recovers 1.2% willpower while All Mother's Blessing is active. All Mother's Blessing is basically Odin Force, so it functions the same as Thor's when you hold the right trigger. Hone Force reduces the cost of using All Mother's Blessing by 10%, so I get more use out of it in combat scenarios. As Guardian Fortune reduces the penalty of not using All Mother's Blessing on strong or unblockable attacks by 50% so that your intrinsic won't go all the way to zero. You can also use Speed Burst if you'd rather just fly faster. God's Tempest is Jane's Overcharge, which gives Jane a boost to ranged attacks. I personally think it was a pretty obvious mistake not to make the ability apply to melee attacks as well, especially when melee compared to range is one of the biggest issues with this game. So instead, I'm using the first two skills to make sure I'm overcharged longer. Charge duration gives me an extra three seconds of God's Tempest, while Tempest Recharge gives me 25% increase intrinsic regeneration. If you want to boost your ranged attacks instead, go for Charge Damage and Tempest Reaction. For the last one, I have Goddess Fist, the only melee perk for overcharge, which gives you a flat 15% increased damage. The champion system still sucks. The only ones worth investing points into are what we have here. Critical Damage, Critical Chance, Perk Chance, and Fortification. Now for the gear. This is primarily a melee build, but I'd ideally like a higher range rating because even with a lower rating, Jane can do pretty good damage with it. So stat wise, you're looking mainly for Might and Valor, with Valor being the priority. Her heroics are very important and having a lot of Valor will not only strengthen your abilities like God Blast, it makes your critical damage higher so that landing crits are a lot more devastating. For the slot one, we have Discordant Van Braces. The important perk is that signature attacks deal Vibranium. The Hammer Spin is one of the strongest attacks in the game. Since Vibranium is a positive status effect, 
It pairs perfectly with the shock damage we get from the ultimate and the cryo we get from the god blast since they're both negative. Combining positive and negative status effects creates the battery effect, which gives a big boost to overall damage. In addition, Vibranium by itself increases the damage you deal to enemies even further. It's likely the best stats effect in the entire game. All Discordant gear can be found by playing the Raid or the Corrupted Vibranium event. Discordant Binding allows me to do Vibranium on ranged of power attacks and has a chance to activate a Vibranium payload. The last one is most important. Ideally, I'd like the payload on a minor artifact, but it works wonderfully in this build. Her ultimate, the All Weapon, has the extra benefit of triggering ranged critical perks like this one. Same as Warrior's Fury, so by using both, I can hit my enemies with bursts of vibranium while dealing shock for easy battery. For the slot 3, I have a reactive buff. This doesn't have all the stats I want, but the perk is what I'm here for. Damage buffs give you a flat 65% damage increase, so having one on your build somewhere is essential. This is a random drop that can be found pretty much anywhere in the game. I got it from a gold chest. The slot 4 might be Jane's best piece in the game and is the heart of the build. Wreath of Yardrasil's top perk is the only one that matters. Odin Force Assistance increases your heroic charge rate by 3.2% when Odin Force is active. This is a visual bug and it actually increases it by 300%. That means when you get a heroic charge burst or pick up a heroic orb, your heroics will recharge much faster. To the point a few orbs can totally refill your heroics as long as you're triggering the Odin Force with the right trigger when you pick them up or get the burst. I bought this piece from the gear vendor on the Helicarrier, which refreshes daily. The offline date for this piece on the Helicarrier is June 28th. It can also randomly drop from villain sectors. For my minor artifacts, I have a Cosmic ISO for the Reactive Cosmic perk, one of the best perks in the entire game. This increases my health and heroic energy whenever I take damage. I was able to get Might and Valor as a nice bonus. You can farm this from DNA chests and vault missions, the Omega Level Threat Family Reunion, the Tachyon Anomaly event, and the Cosmic Threat event. My other is a Triple Valor ISO since this build is mostly about Valor. You can find these randomly from chests, drop zones, or purchase them from the gear vendors in Substation Zero and the Ant Hill. For the major artifact, I'm using both the Tactagon and the Norn Stone of Lethal Will. The Tactagon will give me more overall consistent damage throughout a mission since I do a lot of status damage with this build, but I'll switch to the Norn Stone when I need to do big bursts of damage like in a boss fight. That's the build. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and share with me what you're working on with Jane. If you're interested in more Marvel's Avengers build videos, check out this playlist.